Good morning, everyone. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Yes. Can I say Happy Grandfather's Day? Because my granddaughter is here. I have uh, a letter I'd like to read to you, and then Lynn will come up and follow up with uh, a reading, a letter. Sent, uh, June, sent June 4th, 2018, Central United Church. Thank you so much for your recent generous donation to the Brandon Ministerial Benevolent Fund. This fund is used year-round to assist with urgent and emergency needs for low-income individuals and families. The needs are high throughout the year, but they have also been increased recently because of the loss of so many homes and household goods of our neighbors at Massey Manor. Your donations are timely and very much appreciated. Please know that your donation has helped relieve some financial pressures while staff work with individuals and families on longer term solutions and connections to resources. On behalf of staff and clients at 7th Street Health Access Center, a huge thank you, and it's in capital letters, for your support, uh, compassion, and donation. Sincerely, Vicki, Legacy Manager of 7th Street Access. Alin? Good morning. Last Monday, uh, the Social Outreach Committee had a meeting. And as a result of that meeting, at that meeting, it was decided that we would try and help one of the one family from the Massey Manor. And this is the family we got. And this is a, um, an email that Jody sent me. Jody Chibati and Carol Turabian volunteered to go and visit this family. And this is a result of that. So she said, Carol and I brought some basics to the family as planned on Tuesday. They are a couple with a 17-year-old son. They said they left Massey Manor with only their ID. They have been relocated and have some basic furniture such as couches, beds, and a TV. They didn't have things like a pen or paper to write a phone number down. Carol went back and took them some pens, a calendar, and a paring knife. It seems that there are a number of things happening in the community to assist all of those who were displaced. The only things they mention they need at this point is a coffee table, kitchen knives, fans, as they don't have air conditioning, and a double-sized bedspread uh, for the boys' bed, as Carol brought one over with her. Now, if people would like to drop stuff off at the church, Jody's going to be able to pick it up on Thursday and take it over. If you have any of these items that you would like to donate, I will be in the narthex after church. Just come up and let me know. So that was... Um, um, Coffee table, kitchen knives, fans, um, and a double bedspread. Any of those, if you have and would like to donate, see me after church. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lynn. Now let's uh, start our service with a couple of hymns back to back. First of all, take my life and let it be. No. Oh, wait. The acknowledgement. Sorry. Those who wish to stand, please stand in the words of acknowledgement. Reconciliation. We begin by acknowledging the traditional territory upon which we gather this morning. We are Treaty 2 people. For many thousands of years, the indigenous people of Canada have sought to walk gently on this land. They offered assistance to the first European travelers to this territory and shared their knowledge for survival in what was at times a harsh climate. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honor and deep respect. And now our gathering hymns. First of all, take my life and let it be.
let us sing, I am the dream. praise you for your goodness, you who knew us and loved us even before we were born. You delight in us, your chosen ones. No matter our age or our health, our schooling or our status, we matter to you, our lifelong guide and friend. We thank you for your presence, you who knew us and loved us even before we were born. Though leaves may fall and petals decay, though old traditions die and loved ones depart, the breath of your spirit blows through us like a cool change. We thank you for Jesus, for his unconditional love for all. Um, this, this piece of music is called Blessing Riddle, and it's by um, the words and arrangement are done by Pepper Chop, but it's actually a traditional folk melody. Um, most, some of you may recognize it, the tune as uh, I Gave My Love.
Before I read the scripture, it's good to have uh, uh, some young people here today. And if, if you wish to um, stay in the service, it would be great to have you. If you wish to uh, be together, you can go through that door into the uh, room there. So the first scripture reading is uh, the psalm, psalm number 20. It says, the Lord answer you, the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all of your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all of your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory and in the name of our God set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all of your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help his anointed. He will answer them from his holy heaven with mighty victories by his right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to your king, O Lord. Answer us when we call you. The gospel reading is from Mark chapter 4. Jesus said the kingdom of God is, is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and it would grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. Jesus also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God or what parable will we use for it? Well, it's like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and it becomes the greatest of all the shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests, nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to the people. As they were able to hear it, he did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. A time of confession, our prayer of confession. Let us pray. Forgiving God, we confess that so often we block the idea that you chose us to follow our own special path. We choose fear over love and bury our God-given gifts. We confess those times we fail to notice that others have gifts to express yet the body of Christ needs all of its members to flourish. Oh God. We confess those times that we're jealous of others and crush and obstruct their gifts, denying that they too are chosen. Forgive us, O oh God. Help us to see the loss of our gifts withhold your light from the world, withheld your light withheld from the world, and grant us the courage to live as your chosen people. Amen. And the words of affirmation, God on earth's our buried gifts, forgives us our choosing of fear over love. God releases those gifts to nurture the world. Now hear the assurance of love and redemption. Our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. 
Let us sing together, Jesus bids us shine. Realizing potential. At this stage in my life, I'm contemplating if I have reached my potential as a human being. In doing that, I am taking inventory of what I have accomplished in my work and in my life outside of work. I still feel I have not reached my full potential of who I was created to be the unique creature that Doug Craig is. There is much I feel that I would like to accomplish or reach to really feel content with myself. I continue to try to be a more effective uh, minister and I strive to be a more impressive man which entails being the best uh, husband, grandfather, father, friend, and colleague that I can be. I want to continue to learn, for I feel there is growing to be done with me. I look upon, out upon you this morning, and I think of all the great deeds that you have co accomplished in your lives, and I haven't heard about all of them, but I know you have. There's so much talent in this sanctuary this morning. You have accomplished many extraordinary tasks in your careers, and you have come through plenty of challenges just in living. And through the years, you were loved, and you were taught by your parents and others. You were so tiny when you were born. You were protected, and you were affirmed. You were taught how to be an authentic human being, or at least your parents tried to help you be an authentic human being. And what great potential you had when you were born. We were also small once, with plenty, tons of potential. We were all like little seedlings once. And we have all grown now to physical maturity. Well, not all of us, not the children, but a lot, all the adults. How do you feel you have evolved in terms of your spiritual being, your inner nature? Potential is defined as latent qualities or abilities that may be developed and lead to future success or usefulness. I'll just repeat that definition. Latent qualities or abilities, potential is defined as latent qualities or abilities that may be developed and lead to future success or usefulness. 
In a, in a little seed, there is potential for sprouting into something abundant and large. We all know that. Seeding has taken place in many places on the prairies, and we see the sprouting of greens popping their heads through the soil. Soon we will see the tall grain moving in the fields with the summer wind. And farmers want their seeding to reach its greatest potential, which would be the growth of a high yield crop of wheat or barley or canola or all the other crops they grow. And to reach that potential, it is possible to reach the potential. And to reach it, the farmer does what he or she can do, such as watching the growth carefully and observing any signs of predators to that crop. And if there are signs that the crop needs assistance, the farmer will spray to eliminate the predators of that crop. There are some essentials that the farmer cannot control, that being our weather, especially rainfall. We have here have been blessed recently with abundant sunshine, and it has rained down on us abundantly also. And for this, there has to be trust in God's providence, and on our part, there has to be patience. You and I have grown and matured to the place where we are now. What about reaching potential at this stage in life? We are all members of a community of faith here at Central United Church. All of our talents are, to, are put together to be melded into a vehicle that takes Jesus' gospel to our city. What is our potential as a community of faith? What is it we are asked by God to do here? People have different opinions about the state of our church. Some are negative views which forget about all the good things happening here. And there are plenty of them. And you're a big part of that. We are a team here, and I thank you for your dedication and your commitment. We may be small in number, but as the parable says, the kingdom of God is like a tiny mustard seed, the tiniest of seeds that grows into a huge, shrub, and with those large branches, with abundant shade for the birds, and they build their nests in it. And so with our little bit of faith and dedication, our church is a home for countless families, some that aren't here this morning, who build their homes within the environment of Central. And for many, they say Central is their church, and the church is always there for them. In chapter 4 of Mark, the Gospel, Jesus begins with the parable of the sower. We didn't read that parable, but he begins there. The sower goes out and he just randomly spreads the seed. Then all kinds of scenarios follow. You, there is, is either no growth, there's slow growth, or there's abundant growth with that seed. That seed is the gospel. We are the sowers along with God. We randomly spread the seed. The hearers hear it, but it either grows within them or it does not. It's not the fault of the sower. Our job is to try out as many things as possible to attract attention to the good news of the gospel, which is there to help people, to help families, we are to throw out the seed of the gospel. If one person has received that small little word, like the tiny mustard seed, it can grow inside of him and his faith will become something big and he or she will be a mentor for other people. Even one out of ten persons filled with Jesus' good news can produce an abundant yield in service to other people. Then next in chapter 4, Jesus talks about not hiding faith, but shining bright 
for others to see and hear. The gospel was not meant to be a secret thing. It was to be disclosed. That's our task, full disclosure of the gospel. To bring awareness to people of what their possibilities for fullness of life may be with guidance of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, beginning with all important forgiveness. And next in the chapter comes the parable of of the growing seed and specifically the mustard seed. The seed or the word is broadcast or it's spread randomly. That is our task to broadcast. And while we sleep, the seed grows, not by what we do, but by God's doing. And finally in the chapter, Jesus asks, the question, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? It's like the mustard seed, he says, the smallest, the tiniest of seeds. Yet when it, when sown, it grows into the largest of plants. We know that from little things, big things grow. A big part of realizing potential is stepping into unknown risks. For often there are unknown rewards out there. Fear is a stumbling block to realizing potential. If we never try something for fear, then how do we ever know the possibilities of it, of the action? A great reward may never be savored. Unrealized potential could have been the realm of possibility. Our task is to try all the possibilities and have patience and trust in the germination of them. And fostering the gifts in all ages and abilities is planting seeds of possibilities in people. The potential we see in ourselves and in our our church family is the potential we will see in other people. Life transitions can be like mustard seeds growing into a great plant. Our church community is in transition. God sees our potential. We are called and we're anointed for this service and we're privileged to do it. So let us together plant seeds of hope here within our community so that we may realize the potential that's here. Let us experiment. God will surprise us with the rewards. God knows everything that is possible in your life, my life, and the life of our faith community. Let us experiment. What kind of seed are you? What kind of seed are you? What is your potential yield? What can God do with you? Each of us has a role in realizing the potential here in our community of faith. Thank you for your dedication and your trust. Amen. Before we go to the prayers of the people, let's, uh, let's, in the silence of our hearts, think about people who are grieving this moment and think about people that uh, want healing in their lives. A time of silence. Now let's go to the prayers on the screen. Let us pray. Dear God, we pray for courage to own our gifts, 
to not fall into the trap of false modesty. We ask for help to step out in faith, knowing you provide for all of our needs. God, help your anointing. We pray that our community will be inclusive, open to and loving of everyone's gifts. We ask that our eyes be open wide to the gifts of all in our day to day lives. God, help your anointed. We pray for all whose roles are changing as we enter a new phase of life. May your presence be felt as the old is released and the next step embraced. God, help your anointed. We pray for all who don't know their gifts or who bury them out of fear. We ask for the Spirit to set them free and help them step into the light. God, help your anointed. We pray for situations where gifts are crushed by famine, violence, poverty, war. May we be instruments of your grace. God, amen. And now we're going to sing a couple of hymns back to back. Uh, praise the Lord with the sound of trumpet and dance with the spirit. dance with the spirit. Now with gratitude, we will present an offering.
We'll have the offering come forward and then we'll have our prayer. And let's pray together. Generous God, you have given each one of us bountiful gifts. So we offer this money in gratitude and in love. May our gifts today be used for your work in the world. Amen. And now the words of blessing, let us say them together. Go into the world knowing you are anointed by God, anointed to spread the good news of peace, love, and forgiveness. May the God who calls you bless your ears that you may hear, bless your eyes that you may see, and bless your feet that you may follow in the way of Christ. Amen. Our going forth. 